So let's talk about research in Distant Worlds 2. This is a tutorial intended to cover all the major concepts related to how your faction generates research for discovering new technologies. Like most aspects of the game, research is driven by your success in the game's other mechanics, such as colonization, economic growth, and exploration. Your state economy in particular is extremely important for pushing your research growth to its highest potential. Each technology has a research cost as shown in its description on the tech tree. This cost increases as you move up technology tiers from left to right. Not all technologies on the same tier cost the same amount, though they are relatively consistent. A technology that is currently being studied gains a yearly amount of research points, and when the total number of accumulated points is equal to the cost of that technology, it's learned by your empire. A cost in credits is charged when you select a new technology to study. Additional technologies can be added to your queue by paying for them, and the highest technology in your queue is the only one that receives research points. You can add additional simultaneous projects on the Research Summary menu, causing your yearly points to be divided among more of your selected options. The order of your queue can be adjusted at any time, and even your current project can be changed as long as it hasn't been crashed. You can also remove technologies from your queue, which does not refund the original cost. That technology can later be returned to the queue for no additional charge. Additional funds can be spent on your current project to crash it, and the cost is related to the number of remaining points required to finish the project, meaning higher tier technologies require more credits to crash. Crashed projects are completed in half the normal amount of time. As noted above, a crashed project cannot be removed from the queue and they must be completed before they can be replaced. Projects that are not crashed can randomly have a critical success or failure. Critical success crashes the project for free. Critical failure deducts a significant amount of earned research points from that project. Research points are generated in four ways. Two major ways that will affect you in every game, and then two minor ways that will only affect you if you undertake certain play styles. We will begin by discussing population-generated research. This creates the floor of your research, a number of points that is not modified by your research funding. This research is generated as a natural result of creating strong colonies and can be considered a passive reward for developing high suitability worlds with high populations. The number of pops required to generate this research varies based on difficulty, but is always very high. Though reliable, it is not usually your main source of research. The second way research points are generated is with research labs. Each research lab in your empire generates a number of points depending on what research lab technology you currently have unlocked. Research labs are built on space stations within your empire, two on each research station and one on each spaceport. Research stations can only be built at locations that have a bonus to one of the research categories. These locations are very important to discover and control, generating a large amount of research per base, in addition to their innate research bonus. Spaceports give you half the value of a research base for every colony you build one over. This increases the value of your settled worlds, and once again, links research to the founding of good colonies. If your economy can support it, building spaceports at colonies can significantly boost research, and combined with population research, allows colonies to become a competitive source of points. Unlike direct research from population, research labs require funding to remain operational. You can find out the amount of funding you need and how much you have allocated by mousing over your actual research output number in the research drop-down menu. This funding is a portion of your excess funds as generated by your state economy. This amount is what's left over after all expenses, including reserves, are accounted for. It is then split between research and colony development based on the percentages here. If you find you're not making use of your full research potential, it's usually best to lower your reserve amount first. Though a large reserve is important to assure you have cash on hand for projects, your bonus income does not affect your research funding. Lowering this number will oftentimes be made up for by the purchase of civilian ships and tourism. Once the maximum amount required for research is allocated, leftover funds go into your reserve anyway. If your funding ever reaches zero, your labs will produce the minimum of 50% output. As a final note related to research labs and the space stations that can build them, if you have a planet that already has a spaceport because it's been colonized that also has a research bonus, you can still build a research station there as well. Though this planet will not appear as an option in the list to build research station, if you take a construction ship and you select it manually, you will be able to build the station just fine. Research points can also be gained 
through the espionage system. Although covering the espionage system in depth is outside the scope of this video, when a spy mission to gather technology succeeds on one of your neighbors, you will gain a number of points for that technology that are added to its total. If the points go over the cost, it will be learned immediately. Otherwise, you can complete the technology later by choosing it to add to your queue. Lastly, it's possible to gain some research points through military endeavors or exploration by capturing enemy ships or finding ships that have been abandoned. When you retire such ships, if they have modules that you don't yet have the tech unlocked for, you'll gain points towards that tech. If you do not complete the tech upgrade through the points gained from the ship, those points will be stored for when you later attempt to learn that technology. If the ship provides enough points, the research may be completed immediately. Incoming research is also affected by the research category bonus for the chosen research project. Most of these categories are easy to match to their technologies, though they are not listed in their descriptions. High tech and industry are two of the most difficult categories to easily match to their techs. High tech bonuses apply to research related techs, medicine, and commerce. Industry is related to the mining techs, transportation, and research related to colonization. The other categories align with the technology types in the tech tree much more intuitively and don't require much explanation. You can see under your research menu all bonuses for each research category. These bonuses come from your species, your government, special buildings, any planetary bonus if the world is colonized or has a research station, and your characters, specifically your leader and your scientists. Your scientists need to be assigned to a station with a research lab in order to activate their bonuses. Any tech project gains bonus research based on the percentage increase for its category plus your all research bonus. In addition, they act as a knowledge base to determine if you can unlock higher level techs. The degree to which your people understand a given technological category is determined by adding its bonus to the all research bonus. This total amount determines if your people are ready to unlock and learn these more complex technologies. There are two ways that you can increase your research output directly by unlocking new technologies. The first, as previously mentioned, is getting better research labs. All factions start with basic research labs, which provide 12 points. Research labs provide 16 points. Enhanced research labs provide 20 points. Advanced research labs provide 25 points. And superior research labs provide 30 points. As these labs are all specific upgrades, it's important to remember to upgrade your spaceports and research labs when you get them, if these designs are set to manual. The second kind of research that increases research directly are buildings. Structured research gives a building that provides plus 10 all research and unlocks the specialization buildings, which gives specific themed research bonuses to different categories. Superior research provides a building with plus 20% all research in addition to unlocking the best labs. There are a few other buildings that provide bonuses to research, but these buildings do so as a minor secondary effect. In addition to these techs, increasing the speed and accuracy of your exploration ships impacts the number of research worlds you uncover, and any tech that helps planetary suitability will have an effect on research due to increasing population and your economy in general. Thank you for watching this discussion on the generation of research in Distant Worlds 2. I hope you found it useful. If you did, there's also a guide to colonization on my channel that you might be interested in, and my next guide is going to be on the economy. I intend to split that guide up into two parts, one on the civilian economy and one on the state economy. Have a great day, and I hope to see you again soon.